Gig Gab, the Working Musicians Podcast, episode 155 for Monday, February 26th, 2018. Folks, and welcome to Gig Gab, the podcast by, for, and about working musicians. For the first time, sponsors for this episode include TuneLicensing.com, uh, where we'll tell you how you can save 15% off of licensing cover tunes that you want to release. But we'll talk more about that later. For now, here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And here in Las Gatas, California, it's Paul Kent. How you doing, Mr. Kent? I'm doing great, man. We have a sponsor for the first time. Kind of exciting. It is kind of exciting. Yeah, I actually, I guess we should we should kind of tell people how uh, how we've thought about this for a while, because, I, you know, I've been doing a, a sponsored podcast for almost 13 years now. So the, the concept of this is nothing new. Of course, I run a company called Backbeat Media that uh, manages and sells sponsorships on a bunch of podcasts now, including this one. Um, but uh, but this is our first sponsor that we've aired here. We've had some interest from others. We really didn't put this into the sales pool until semi-recently because uh, we kind of wanted to establish this show, right? We wanted to do what we wanted to do. It's not uh, It's not just a money grab for us. In fact, thus far, it hasn't been a money grab at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love doing it. You know, it's all of that. Uh, and also, to, to be fair, uh, it you know having sponsors on board when the listenership is like low when you're just starting out isn't necessarily uh, the best thing for long term success. So you know, in three years we've built this thing and you know we hear from people all over the world. We all certainly all over the U S. Yeah, and uh, you know the 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 listens are have steadily you know climbed and you know it's out there. So it's kind of cool. We did get approached if I recall right several months ago by a, let's just say a uh, product that was tangentially interest to, of interest to our audience. It wasn't, it wasn't a music product. Right. Do you recall that? I, of course I recall that. Yeah. We'll, <laughs> we'll, stay, we'll stay away from the brand, but um, yeah, we, and it, it's actually a brand that some of our other shows were happy to take and it, it, it's fine, but, but you know, uh, Paul and I had this conversation, like, do we want our first sponsorship to just be something that's out there just because they're podcast sponsors? And the answer was no. Uh, and all the listeners obviously. would be like, I don't get it. You know, they're right. just they're just taking in money. So having tune licensing, something that's a direct hit to the people who listen to the show. I actually am really I'm really excited about that. I think it's really cool. I mean, it's you know, you and I love doing this and we put a lot of time into it and, you know, we want to continue to do it and put a lot of time into it. And just, you know, get a little compensation for our time in and, you know, providing a good service to the sponsor by giving a little access to the people who listen. I think this is a pretty holistic relationship. It's that's the idea. That's right. So we'll talk more about that later. But uh, we'll get. Yep. Well, in fact, we'll 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 do the official read later, uh, as we would normally do. But uh, yeah, it was good to have that. Like, yeah. Well, you anyway, just doing. yeah, yeah. And thanks to licensing for for joining in with us. So we'll talk yeah. about it later. Yeah. I had a very very interesting Saturday night. I had a gig Saturday night. Okay. And uh, so the gig is in a town. It's about half hour for me. Um, the venue is really interesting. It's a, a, so it's a small town that has a small downtown and there's a, a theater that got turned into a music venue. Excellent stage, excellent lights, excellent sound because it was a theater at one time, really big dance floor. And then, you know, nice bar and, and, uh, and you know, kind of different types of seating from like, you know, seating along the walls. to a couple of high, high top tables and that type of thing. Sure. Um, the story of this, this gig, you know, I've known the guy who's owned the venue for a while. He's, he's been around the music scene here with bands and, you know, with providing sound services. And so he did. So, so we signed up to do a gig about a week before the gig, someone else I know does a gig there and shares that it didn't go well. Like there was a, there was a conflict between the band and, and the management. Uh -oh. I'm not going to go too, I'm going to go too deep into sure. it, but, but, but you, you know, went the, into this knowing that things might be, or at least things were rocky for someone else. That's it. And so, 
you know, I, I, you know, there's always two sides to every story, Ab- right? That's so, the first thing to remember when you hear that kind of stuff. Everybody needs to vent about the thing that they need to vent about, but, and that's cool. But, yeah. But. <laughs> so I, I contacted the owner and say, Hey, you know, I'm aware that this one artist has said there was an issue. I'm assuming there's two sides. I, you know, my dealings with you have always been fine. Uh, but, you know, just a little bit of a pink flag. And he's like, yeah, you know, there is two sides to it. And, you know, but and we reaffirmed our agreements, uh, the times, the the play times, the set at loading times, uh, the money uh, and all that type of stuff. We're cool. All right. Day of the event. So, I, hang on. I, I want to take us on a brief tangent there because. That what you did there is key, not not only because you heard of this other issue, like just like saying it right up front, like, hey, look, I'm not calling you to yell at you. I'm just calling you to let you know that word got around. But also, uh, whether or not you've heard of any problems, this concept of calling the club, you know, week of especially a new venue for you, whether it's a new venue in general, but a new venue for you calling them week of saying, hey, I just want to do essentially an advance, right? That's what that's what this is called, where you call up, you make sure, all right, what do you need to know from me specifically about this gig? What do I need to know from you? Like, what time can I load in? What are there any specifics about where to park? Let's reconfirm the times and the money, right? That whole thing, especially if you've been booked for two months and, you know, there's somebody like now everybody's like booking the summer. Well, come August, A lot can have changed and it's good to know before you show up. So doing this anyway is great, especially in the scenario you talked about. So I didn't I didn't want to take us too far, but I just wanted to make sure like this is totally cool to do and really smart business. Yes. And and actually, I did it by um, by Facebook Messenger. That's that's where my contact I've had phone calls with them before, but I wanted something in writing. Mm. Right. So, you know, a contract would have been a contract would have been legalistic. And again, when people say always get a contract. Yes, sort of. Remember, a contract for a thousand dollar gig, you know, or a five hundred dollar gig. Are you really, even if you have a contract, are you going to go to the the lengths to you know litigate? Right, if something right. goes wrong no, for that amount. Yeah, so just me, having something where I can say you said this and you're not doing what you said. That's but it. you said it. It's right here. That's kind of the point. Of this is it, you know a, a, a tool to kind of hold someone accountable to their commitment. That, so, that's really yeah, what it was. A, really, I look at it as a tool of clarity, right? Y- you know, if, sure. it's, if it's we're both misremembering a conversation we had on the phone that, you know, that turns into you said, I said, and, and, you know, we know human memory is like fallible and malleable. Right. So, yep. but, but like, like you did, <laughs> either via email or Facebook messenger or text message, whatever is comfortable for you and the, and the person that's, that's coordinating things like that's the, that to me, that's the, where contracts really matter. And that's where they end to, you know, you're not going to sue somebody over a thousand dollar or probably not even going to sue them over a $5,000 gig that, that, you know, winds up going wrong because it's just not worth your time or trouble. But like you said, having that thing where it's like, yep, we agreed. It's right there. Like crystal clear. Yeah. All right. So actually I should back up a little bit farther. So, so the gig was booked about a month ago about, or six weeks ago and about two or three weeks ago when I just called to check in with him, uh, texted to check in with him. He said, well, uh, something's come up and you talk to you about it. call me. So I call and he talk and we talk and a private party has rented his club for earlier in that afternoon. Mm. And that private party had its own band and we had to figure out the logistics for all this. Sure. And, you know, my opinion on this was, Hey, good. You know, I want you to be successful. Let's, let's figure out a way to work around it. So what I actually offered was we would come in before the private party came in at five set up and then sound check yep. and let yep. the other band sit in front of us. Cause you know, supposedly it was just like a small, you know, band that was friends of the private party. And we agreed to that. Cool. And I communicated that. So set up at three um, and sound check at three, we're out of there by four 30. Other party comes in at five, other band plays at seven, six 30 or something. That's supposed to be off at seven 30. Uh, and then we were originally supposed to play at eight or eight 30. Anyway, so that that's the that's version one of the agreement. Um, the day of the gig. Now we've already had one conversation. Like, hey, I'm aware that there's been some consternation, right? Right. So day of the gig, he's like, um, 
so the other band came in and they set up and they took the full stage and I was like, well, so my whole band this is not cool. So I'm, I actually took a, a bit of a tone. That is not cool. My band has, you know, made arrangements to be there at three o'clock for an eight thirty downbeat. You know, we've, we've rearranged days. One guy was even coming from a family obligation where he was working around this to get a three o'clock set up for a nighttime gig. Sure. Yeah. That's and so that's, I was like, that's like, and my guess is you're not that to me, that schedule is very reminiscent of a wedding or function gig. But my right. guess is the money that you were getting is probably not reminiscent of a wedding that's or right. function gig. So, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he's saying this and I'm like, dude, this is not cool. You know, you're, you're causing me a problem with my band, you know, cause I made a commitment to them and they made their plans around this. It's not cool. He goes like, I know, but they, you know, they're already in, they're already set up. What are we going to do? And so I was why, like, right, why listen. did he let, I, mean, I was just going to say this. I realize it's rhetorical. Why did he let them come in before you when you, he knew you were coming in before them? The only explanation I could possibly give is that he didn't. Sure. He must have had a manager yeah, who either yeah, didn't yeah. know or didn't stop it or whatever. But but but, you know, it happened. Like I said, it's rhetorical. So right. Yeah. I let him know. Not cool. I immediately got on the phone, called my band, said, hey, new don't show up at three. Uh, I got a hold of the guy who was had a family obligation. I said, now be there at seven fifteen. Other band is off the stage at seven thirty. Uh, and if, if we have a late start time because of this, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure we get set up and everything's right. But so this is yeah. the new plan. Yeah. All right. So we all get there. 715. Um, we're waiting, loading an area. And the other band is on stage. It's 730. They're, they're still playing. It's 745. They're still playing. It's eight o'clock. They're still playing eight 15. They're still playing at, at 745. I went out and found the guy, you know, the, the owner, like, well, what's yeah. the deal? He was like, no, no, this is the last song. Huh. And then, and then when it kept going at eight o'clock, I went and found the guy and said, all right, dude, uh, this is going off the rails. This has been Rocky here. And you know, the, the last band that he had the problem with that, that I referred to in the beginning of the conversation, yeah, they actually, they walked on him. Oh. They, they actually walked. Uh, so he knows that that's a possibility that I know about. So eight o'clock I go find him and I'm like, you know, this isn't cool. Again, you know, we've rearranged our day for this. And now, you know, it's three things that you've made a commitment to me that aren't happening. And now I'm worried. I said, dude, I need to be paid before we take the stage, before we lift a finger. I don't know where this is going. Right. right. I'm going to, so, I'm going to stop you right there because this right. is a perfect time to tell everybody about tune licensing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but it is right because, uh, like, I I don't want to I don't want to cut this story short. I have a feeling not only are we going to talk uh, like we're going to hear the end of this story, but we're going to hear like there's going to be a lot to dissect here, and I don't want to push our first sponsor spot all the way to the end of the show just because we're on a roll. <laughs> so I was looking for a spot to stop us and there it is. Fair enough. Yeah. Go. So, uh, yeah, like I said, tune licensing.com. Uh, and I'm going to tell you this up front. I'll tell you it at the end too, but coupon code gig gab 2018. So G I G G A B two zero one eight gets you 15% off of their licensing fees. And the, what they do is remember when Paul made that album of cover songs, he needed to get licenses to be able to release those cover songs. Here's where things get interesting, right? Um, there's two ways to get that license. One is to actually get permission from the artist or from their publishing company. They don't necessarily have to give that to you, but that's the best way to do it. If they don't, then... You have to send their publishing company and prove that they have received a letter of intent uh, in order. For, and that letter of intent has to be received before the song is released by you. Otherwise, they can stop you. Now, any song that's been released by anyone else uh, can be released by you that you don't necessarily need permission, but you do need to get the license right. And. If you don't do it right and you don't understand what right is, you could be in a scenario where you put out a CD or whatever you release it, you know, online or however you want to do it. And the artist or the their publishing company comes back and says, nope, you didn't cross all your T's and dot all your I's properly. We demand that you take that down. And that can be not only a real drag, but it can really be a problem because some like 
it, like a lot of us are out there doing cover songs, playing cover songs. You can take it to the next level by releasing them and actually using that to market yourself. And, you know, history is filled with examples of bands that have really hit playing cover tunes. You know, I'll throw the Black Crows and Van Halen out there as mm. right as some bands that just do that. You need to get it right. And unless you're a lawyer or really enjoy thinking like one, you need somebody to take care of this for you. And that's what TuneLicensing.com does. They are really smart. They know everybody that they need to know. They know how to dot I's and cross T's. And not only that, they like it. These people <laughs> love to get this stuff right. And they're the people you want on your side. So uh, you go to TuneLicensing.com. You pick the song or songs that you want to uh, license. They have this huge database. And then uh, on your on checkout, you enter in GigGab2018 and you save 15% off of their licensing fee. Again, this is TuneLicensing.com and coupon code GigGab2018 at checkout saves you 15% off their licensing fee. We're going to be talking a lot about tune licensing. They're a sponsor for a little while here. So we've got some other things to, uh, to share some interesting anecdotes as well. But, uh, but for now, just know what they do and why they do it and why you need this. Really yeah, it's important. very cool. Yep. Our thanks There's, to Tune Licensing for sponsoring this. Absolutely. Episode. Thanks to Tune Licensing. There, I know several bands right now that are not just recording demos because really demos are more often video than anything right now. What they're doing is they're going in, they're recording 8, 10, 12, 15 songs and then pressing them into CDs or putting them out because their their fans want more. They, you know, can I buy some of your music? And uh, so, so I know several bands right now that are that are cover bands that are recording covers, their versions of covers, and selling them as another even revenue stream. So, you know, this is particularly particularly useful at this time. So, uh, it seems to make a lot of sense. So, cool. Cool. All right, back to my story. Back to your story. Now, actually, I need to I need to back up even a little bit more. So I'm driving to the gig and um, I get a text message from one of my band members is like, dude, did you see this? And he shares a Facebook post while I'm driving to the gig. So we're about six, 6 p.m. The venue has posted on their Facebook page. I uh, just want to let everybody know that uh, the building is sold and, you know, we're trying to work on a, on a new lease, but, uh, you know, it's not looking great. And uh, this might be the last night for the venue. So oh, my guys are like, no. they're not even going to be there tomorrow. We are not getting paid. for So they, they know about the other band that had a problem. They now know that they, that, that something weird happened and their, their setup time is not three o'clock. <laughs> it's seven fifteen, And now they're starting to see that the venue might not even be there tomorrow. They're like, are we getting paid? So this is, so we this get is there. known as a cascading series of bad events. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So like I said, I get there and I'm not going to, you know, it doesn't dawn on me to ask the guy for the money up front right then and there, sure. but I'm aware of what band is thinking. And I'm seeing the guys kind of loitering around, you know, waiting for the other band to get off. And you know, there's, there's not tension. It's not like this is life or death. Uh, uh and the, 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 the staff at the club was really nice and accommodating to cool. us. And so, you know, the vibe was okay. The first time I met with the owner, when I first walked in, you know, he's like, are we cool? You know, th that type of stuff. And I like, yeah. And so then I went to wait for the band to get off. And then when the band didn't get off, you know, and then the second time when he said the band was going to get off and they didn't get off, that's what I went back and said, dude, listen, it's been bumpy to hear, you know, you let everybody know that this might be the last night. My band is back there asking if we're going to get paid. We're now, you know, way behind as to where we were, where you said we were going to be. I really need to be paid before we lift a finger. And he goes, I get it. He just said, I get it. Walked away. I went backstage. He showed up an envelope, and you know, before the other band was off stage, we were paid. And wow, and and uh, you know, everybody was calm. And then, as a kicker, it was a great freaking gig. Like I said, the room was fantastic. It was so nice to have a big stage like that to entertain on. We, you know, like you've seen us. Sure. We are usually elbows to elbows, ten people on little stage. You know, it's like a clown car packing us all in. Those types of things. Yeah, the, gig, the gigs room. I did with you were. 
We're we're luxurious stadiums. Yes, yes, ridiculously so. Yeah, yeah. No, but this was like a nice big, you know, theater stage mm. room. You know, room to play off of each other in the band. You know, the guy, the horn players, when they were taking a solo, would step up to the front and and uh, you know, just a lot of interaction. The sound was great, huge, huge sound. Light, you know, pro light system. Everything about the gig was fun. People got into it. We played great. So. In an interesting day of ups and downs and, and uh, you know, like, you know me. So it, it, when 730 came and the band kept going, the first song I was like, hmm. then when it was 745, I felt like we were being disrespected and I had to figure out was well, the you, other band just going off and nobody was going to take them off or were they approved to was right, the owner just being true. a coward and saying I don't want to bum these people out they paid me for a private party here you know what was going on and so I you know my tension was going up a little bit my guys in my band know me when I get that way and they're like dude just breathe it'll all be all right you know let's just take care of business and uh so it was an interesting day of ups and downs and and uh culminating in a huge up I mean the gig was That's three hours so of heaven awesome that's great. It's nice when you've got like all that stress and, and the stage almost becomes the release, but, but it's not just like, it's not just you, right? The, the rest of it all has to fall into place too. So, ah, that's good. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it, man. Oh, that's good. Yeah. If I would have had to start the gig, knowing what I knew, wondering if we were going to get paid and, and on in the back of my mind, wondering if I was going to have to do battle over this type of thing after the gig, it definitely wouldn't have been, would not have been an enjoyable situation. That's an interesting comment, man, that, getting paid ahead of the gig actually might be a good thing for the club owner to do. If there's, if there's reason, especially I would say if there's reason to think that maybe things wouldn't go according to plan, but even like, it's a nice gesture, especially like once the band's set up or whatever, I've had a lot of clubs. It seems more so lately just come up and say, Oh yeah, here's, you know, here's your check or whatever. And, and that's a nice thing. You're like, all right, cool. Now I want to do a good job here. Uh, as opposed to, oh, yeah, at the end of the night, that's right. We still got to run around and find the guy, you know, in yep. order to get paid like that. That part sucks for club owners that listen here. Uh, that is one of the worst parts of the gig is like not only are you trying it's late, you're you're tired, uh, probably really sweaty, you know, and you've got stuff to do, pack yep. up and then drive home and to have to carve one person out, which is usually how it works and say, don't worry. The rest of us will pack up while you go and like stand over at the bar doing nothing for 20 minutes while so-and-so, you know, comes around and, and it's now they take their sweet time to do it. Uh, and we realize, you know, the, the managers at the clubs also have things to do at the end of the night, right? Like that's a, that's a busy time for everyone. It's better to get it out of the way ahead of time. It is. And, and it's interesting. Um, you know, you've experienced a whole range of stuff like there's this odd tension where the guy knows you're waiting to get be paid. And, and, you know, why isn't he moving as quickly as you think he would as something, you know, there's just, yes. there's often when it comes to getting paid, there's a, there's a, a strange vibe to it. Like, you know, when you have a good relationship with the club, you know what the rhythm is. He likes to go count his bar before he pays you or, you know, that sure. type of thing. Yep. So, so there's that, but you know, in new places or, you know, God forbid in places where it's not a great draw night and there's a guarantee or, yeah. you know, even worse, you know, we've had, we've had a club where we've started doing the door ourselves. They can keep someone there with us, but you know, it, the numbers didn't, feel like they added up to us the number of people at the club versus what we got paid when we're getting paid based upon the door. And so, you know, there's that, that type of weird, you know, overhead of things sometimes. So, uh, yeah, getting paid is a thing, you know, you want to keep it as copacetic and, yeah. and you know, chill as possible. But I would say that the net net of this is that the, the club owner and his staff ended up being really nice, you know, cool. That's great maybe not a great manager and maybe, you know, again, I, I get it. You know, the, a, a private party came in and probably paid him a ton of money and he didn't want to bum them out. And he might not have been totally straight with me about how long he told the other band they could play, or he might've been optimistic yeah, maybe, about maybe what was going to happen. Somebody else interfaced with him and it wasn't, I mean, there's, you know, just giving the benefit of the doubt, maybe there were two different conversations that happened and neither, neither one really wanted to go the other way. So, yeah. And again, yeah. the net net of this is how good is your radar at, at telling when someone is 
being willfully deceitful with you, you know, as opposed to just being lame, you know, or yeah. incompetent yeah. or, or not strong enough to, you know, honor their commitments and that type of stuff. So this, this whole people management part of running your band, you know, in terms of getting paid and, and interacting with club and again, clubs, clubs are a whole different thing. You know, you, you deal with a corporation, you set up a deposit, you know, you, you know, you get paid and I don't think I've ever had a problem with a corporate gig. Oh yeah. Never. No. Well, that's always paid. Like in usually in my experience, it's paid in full, you know, days before downbeat before yeah. well before down, like it's paid before you wake up that morning. Usually. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, I've had one wedding where, they came and said, Hey, you know, can, can we do it in, in installments? So I usually do 50% deposit and then 50% before we start. And they asked for installments. I had to chase down one or two of the installments sure. over a 10 month period or something like that. But yeah, clubs are always, you know, it's a cash business. It's a, it's a hand to mouth business. Often there's just something about getting paid with clubs. That is a, there's an, uh, yeah. an art and a science to it, it right? It is. Yeah. As, as, as we've been kind of having this conversation, I've been, I've been thinking about all the tips and tricks that, that sort of, you just wind up doing over time. Right. So um, the first one is if they pay you in a check, especially if it's the end <sighs> of the night, well, ask them if they can cash it out. If usually right. if they've got the money in the drawer, they're frankly very happy to cash that out for you uh, because it means less, less cash for them to deal with. So, right. uh, so, you know, but, but often you just have to ask and it's okay to ask, you know? Um, so that would be my, my first tip is just ask. And if you get a check at the beginning of the night, when they give it to you, ask them, say, you know, do you mind if I come to you at the end of the night and see if you can cash this out? Some places will, you know, say they have a man, maybe they do have a policy where, no, we just don't cash any. Okay, fine. But, uh, but otherwise, and actually, let me pause you right there because yeah. there's a skill in what you're, in what you're sharing here. And this is, and here's the deal. If you're weird about money, right. If you, if you like, that's it are, and you and you create a, a an environment where it's contentious from the beginning, you can expect it to be contentious continuing on. Right. So again, this all goes into, you know, how well do you know the guy you're dealing with? How well can you read the guy you're dealing with? Sure. But, but a business conversation on its own is a totally valid thing to do, right? Absolutely. And all this There's stuff. There's nothing weird about this. And right. That's right. Unless you make it weird or unless, unless they make it weird. Yes, right. Right. But, but on paper, like you, this is a conversation in, in theory that's already happened, right? That you know you're yeah. going to get your thousand bucks and uh, your 500, whatever it is, you know, like that's all decided in advance. There's just this last minute little logistical dance that happens and there's no reason for that to be weird. And and again, if you get the check at the beginning of the night, Hey, thanks. That's great. Uh, if you don't mind at the end of the night, I might come up and see how you're doing on the register. If you can cash it out, I'd love to be able to pay the guys in cash tonight. You, you know, yep. that's it. And then that's all you say. And if they want to make it weird or they have some policy, they'll tell you it's fine, but there, there's no harm. When you, business. when you get the cash, do not walk away until you've counted the cash counted in front of the person that just gave it to you. If they yeah. want to walk away while you're doing it, look, you can't shackle them to the bar or whatever, but just, Hey, thanks. I'm just going to count it here to make sure we're all good. And I'll tell you what I have done it. 95%, maybe 99% of the time. It's exactly what it should be. Right. The, the, nobody tries to, I don't, uh, yeah, I have somebody's tried to screw me once, but it's fine. Um, and most of the time it's fine. There have been times where it's short and they're like, you can tell they're embarrassed. You know, it's like, oh, and there was one time where uh, it was, it was, it was too much. It was 20 bucks. You know, there was an extra 20 in there and I went and gave it back to the the manager and the guy looked at me like I had my head screwed on backwards. He's like, mm. what's this? And I'm like, well, I just counted the money and actually, Jim, I counted it twice because I've never had more than <laughs> here. I said, but you gave me an extra 20 bucks. He's like this is the weirdest thing. He's like, I've never had a band come up and give me money back. And I'm like, well, um, I'm not giving you money back. I mean, it's not a discount. It's just, we agreed to X your money. You gave me X plus 20. And he's like, you know what, man, keep it. That's fine. That's fine. And you know what? Most, I bet most would say that, but yep. think about what, think about what trust you just created with this guy. Totally. 
right? It, 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 it will affect all future conversations, right? You've demonstrated yourself to be an honorable person. Mm-hmm. So that, that's actually pretty cool. It's pretty good. Yeah. I, I, I always love scenarios like that where it's like, you know, you're handed this golden opportunity to, to show how great you are. You know, you, you don't always have that, right? When, if the money's even at the end of the night, it's like, thank you. That's all you can say, <laughs> right? You know, like, I wish there was more so I could show you that I'd give it back to you. That sound, that just makes it weird. Right. But, um, but yeah, count the money. And, um, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, the other one that, that, um, actually there's two more having a payment deal like, a, or a cancellation deal. Mm-hmm. Um, it, this gets weird when it's a club, like, like for what you did, there's no reason when you're negotiating this a month ago to think that it might be canceled last minute. Right. But yeah. If uh, and that's where that's where, uh, you know, the boilerplate of a contract can be can be helpful. Not that I you know, contracts make people feel weird. But if you get into a scenario where there is a contract throwing in just some boilerplate thing and and if somebody asks about it, just explain, oh, we do this for our outdoor gigs. You know, if you call us by noon on the day of the gig, the cancellation is, uh, you know, 100 percent or 50 percent. If you call us by 3 p.m., it's 50 percent. If you call us by the or, you know, if you tell us it's canceled one after we've gotten there, it's 100 percent. You know, you owe yeah. us the, the whole thing, whatever it is, because I do that, you know, all summer long. We, I live in New England, so any day it could rain at any time and you really never know. So. Most clubs kind of have just what I explained as the cancellation policy. Like, look, if we call you at noon, you know, or even actually three o'clock is around here tends to be for an evening gig. The time before which if we call you because of weather, like we don't owe you anything. Like, OK, so this this kind of brings up. I often find when talking about money and I, I hold this up to the light because I'm, I wonder whether I'm doing this for my own edification or because it's really the useful tactic that I think Sure, I find it compelling to remind people that, you know, most of my band does this for a living. Like they count on the, on the income. Like, so when I, yeah. when I, when people ask me for a quote and, you know, I know we're higher than other bands, I, you know, sometimes justify it, you know, if it needs justification again, if they know us and they just say, what's your price, but if they try and, you know, get it down below reasonable. I just, you know, you just understand a, we're a large band. We do our pro band. So we have a crew that sets up our sound and runs our sound and you know, that type of thing. But you know, these are professional musicians who make their, all of their income off of music. They teach during the day and they gig during the night and that's how they put together a living. So, you know, we, we try to stay to these prices. I, I find that's disarming to others. I mean, who's going to say you, you don't deserve it? Some people may say, I get it, but I can get the same service for less. And, you know, if that's the way they perceive okay, it, then fine. that's a different conversation. Right. But I find, you know, like you, when you said, you know, so I can pay the guys tonight. And just using that tactic of reminding people that this is. Yeah, this isn't it, funny the, money. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's the difference between the true weekend warriors. And we've had this discussion with other guys who say, I do it just for love. And, you know, you know, that they come from that perspective and why this further muddies the, the environment for people who do make their living off of this. Right. right so right. even though it may be a hundred bucks, you know, that guy is gigging six nights a week. So, you know, he can make 600 bucks in a week and pay his rent. Right. So, I mean, it, it, this is again why why that understanding that even the semi professional musician should have some understanding about what business you're wading into when you in about being cavalier about the finances of the stuff. I, I, yeah, I like that word too. Cavalier is the right word to you. Don't want to be cavalier about the finances, and even if you're in a band where everybody's got day jobs and like there's no way you don't want to you don't want to misrepresent yourself, right? So you don't want to say, well, that guy or one of the guys happen happens to need this. Like I I always say, oh yeah, you know this is part of our income. It is now yep. you know it might be. More of a part for, you know, band member A than it is for band member C. But it doesn't matter. Like at that, that's like each person's personal life. But I know that everybody that's here is walking into this counting on that hundred bucks or that 200 bucks going in their pocket. And I like beyond that. I mean, I know these people and they're my friends, so I probably do know the scenario, but it's it's irrelevant. Right. Everybody here is expecting this. Some of them might be relying on it. So I just say it's a part of our income. 
It's, yeah. you know, and that's it. That's all that needs to be said. Um, you know, and when you, and, and like you, like, like you said, when, when you, when you convey it that way, that this is part of our income, this isn't just some thing that we do. Not only does it make the person paying you realize, Oh, I have a responsibility now, or it should, um, if they, you know, unless they're, they have like a cold heart, but, um, <laughs> it, which happens which I totally have of course it happens um but it also sort of conveys that we're treating this seriously too we're not just here to you know get drunk and and look like fools on your stage right we're this is part of our income this is a job yeah it's one that's different from well not necessarily a job it's a service it's right a ser- you know ser- yes well yeah but i mean the difference between a job and a service you know semantical it is it very much yeah yeah. So interesting. Yeah. And uh, the last little tip that uh, that I had was the nice part about the pay in advance gigs where, you know, you wake up that morning and the, and the gigs already been paid for is it leaves room for tipping at the end because they sometimes <laughs> feel like they want to come up and give you something, even though they've already paid you for this great performance. You just right. gave. everybody's really happy at the end of the night and weddings and parties, especially Man, you know, especially if it's well, weddings, people always want to like, you know, spread their money around and uh, and parties, you know, if it's like the the if you wind up playing a party for a company with an overly egotistical, you know, manager or CEO that wants to show that they're the ones with the money. Well, there's nothing wrong with being there to receive it for them. So, Mm. yep. So tips, you know, it's not a bad thing, man. I've had, I've had good tip nights at like weddings and corporate parties. Those can, those can be nice little, an extra, you know, an extra hundred bucks in your pocket just for being in the right place at the right time. I have a quick aside on on a tip situation. So this is Acoustic Madness, the trio I play in, had a gig about a month ago. And uh, it was at a really nice wine bar in a kind of a corporate, actually really close to Apple's new campus. And um, yeah. And so there, you know, there's different types of people. There's, you know, people meeting for a glass of wine. There was, you know, clearly people who were there on an after work get together type of thing. And one guy comes up and he requests Hotel California. I say, yeah, we know that one. We can do that. And I never say you have to tip in order to get your request. You know, many people understand that type of thing, that that's just kind of a good, good manner type of thing. But I was like, uh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get to that one. Uh, and he came up to me right as we we're going on a break. As we're coming back from the break, he comes up because, well, actually, um, I'd like to have my boss sing with you. Oh. So he was coming up on behalf of his boss. And I was like, uh, we don't really do sit ins. You know, you never know what you're going to get. And so we don't really do that type of thing. He goes and he you know, tried to plead his case. Clearly, his boss had sent him on this. Right. Right. Yes. Right. Next break, the boss himself comes up and says, I'll tip you 50 bucks to let me sing with you. Now, this is an interesting point, right? Huh. Yeah, so, there's a, and it, there's a decision to be made now. You can't just like, push it off. Yeah. That's right. And um, I, I guess I'll, I'll say we turned it down, actually, because yeah. we didn't want to be get into that business of selling karaoke time. Um, but it was an interesting thing. You know, we would take a tip, you know, 50 bucks would be a pretty good tip from one person. Yeah. Uh, but this wasn't tip. This was pay to play. And that's different than tipping. Right. right. And uh, and so we actually turned it down. Uh, but I just thought it was kind of interesting. Like the whole progression of this was a request of a song, not really a request of a song, a request for who I want to sing the song, <laughs> sing the song to, you know, we'll, we'll make it worth your time, but that's not really worth our time. Cause if he would have stunk, it would have been, that's not, it wouldn't have been worth $50 for the other people who were there right. who, were, who were sitting around us. So we actually turned that one down. Yeah. I, I will say if you want to get into a scenario where that is ripe for tipping, setting yourself up as like live band karaoke is a perfect scenario for that. Uh, but, but I mean, that's a different thing than, than what you're talking about here. Remarkably so. Yes. And actually, I'll I'll say that um, because Steve and my band has the most encyclopedic knowledge of music and remembrance of lyrics and and chords and songs, we make quite a bit 
off of impromptu requests of the most arcane stuff. I mean, yep. good Lord. He did a, he did an acoustic version of YMCA that we all just kind of <laughs> got on. It was just weird, but you know, it, it made that person happy and, yeah. you know, and the audience got a laugh out of it. And, you know, that's actually one of the really remarkable things about acoustic madness is Steve. We start with Steve as his encyclopedic knowledge, Mary Ellen, who can harmonize to anything. And then I can follow along, you know, fairly well on, on uh, ag- agreements. And usually by the second time around, I can add some, something vocally. And so, you know, that that's part of coming to see us in certain venues, yep. right? That it's become that type of thing. That's, what, that's uh, what Monkey Fist is like when, when we have Maddie on guitar, cause he's, he's like Steve, it's that, it's that same, like if he's heard a song mm-hmm. once, he knows a chord structure that will work for it and knows all the lyrics. So it's like, <laughs> that's great, man. Yep. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. So my little anecdote turned into a whole show. I kind of figured it would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um I I I I played a madhouse this week. We did um it was actually really fun. We it was our season opener for Madhouse and uh, and there's actually a bunch of videos online. I will share a link to the group where those I mean it's describing Madhouse is really difficult. Um so it's easier to just kind of see some of it. But this one was uh um, WitchCon two was the first act, and then a a sort of Mardi Gras funeral thing was the second act. So we brought in a five piece horn section, and Julius, our our prodigy, seventeen year old keyboard player, charted all the stuff for the horns, which was just amazing. Mm. And um, and we wound up playing a lot of second line groove kind of stuff. A lot of those, you know, the, like those Cajun grooves, and and it's you know, it's like that little feet stuff or the Doctor John stuff. Love it. Yep, but it's a really it. weird thing for for a, a band to play because especially a band that's not playing that stuff. I mean, we play different things all the time, and those seconds- it's hard to fake that. That and reggae are really hard feels. You know that if you're if you're to pardon the phrase, but if you're too white about it, yeah. it really it falls apart. It gets too stiff, and it's not the right thing. Well, and the key to that that Cajun stuff. And and perhaps I'm not using the right term, but I mean, that's that really is, you know, Cajun and then Zydeco kind of yeah. together. Second but, line. But it, it's that well, it's where there's there's literally two grooves happening on top of each other. There's that double time kind of da, 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 and then and then a half time, da, 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 you know, and and making those sort of fit together while they're almost fighting each other is really where the groove happens, right? Cause it's neither double time nor half time. It's, it's like that, that, that thing that happens when you're trying to do both. And, and the good news was we had a full day of rehearsal beforehand and really it started to come together. Like, you know, Julius, the piano player and I really kind of found that place where, we sort of drove each other with it. It was like, okay, good. Now Ooh. we can play this, you know, realistically. And uh, it went really well. It was, um, it was fun. It was, it was one of our best ones. And I got to uh, check a bucket list item. I never in a million years thought that I would ever be able to play in a live band uh, where we backed somebody up singing Clarence Carter's Stroken. And yet... That's exactly what happened last. That's a bucket list item. Oh, I mean, I always love that song. I mean, it's ridiculous, <laughs> right? But you know, when what band is going to play that song? You you can't. Uh, but it worked for Madhouse. Right. It was part of the story, so it was good. I got it. I'm going to have to look it up. So. Oh yeah. All right. Stroke it to the East. Clarence Stroke Carter. West. Doctor CC. That's right. Yep. All right. So so it was good. It was a it was a fun gig, and it was you know a a bit of a um uh, a triumphant return to being a moving human again uh, mm. after hurting my back i wasn't really sure how that would go but playing actually worked out to be really good you know it's it's something my body's used to doing obviously and moving and being like warm and and sweating for that long was turned yeah. out to be really good for me yeah 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 so that was cool like, whew, I can still do this. Thank goodness. You know, glad you're every, better every time I hurt myself and I'm sure lots of you out there are the same way. It's like, uh Oh, to, you know, what's this going to mean for that? So, so it didn't mean anything. It meant I can still keep doing it. So yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll keep healing. Keep playing. Thanks, and man. Dave always be performing. That's the idea. That's right, folks. I do want to uh, say thank you again to tune licensing.com and uh, you know, 
Check them out at tunelicensing.com. GigGab 2018 saves you 15% off the licensing fees. And remember, when you license your covers, you're doing right by the guy who wrote the great song that you want to play. That's true. Not only are you protecting yourself, you are actually doing the right thing. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Always be performing, everybody. See you next Thanks, week. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Paul.